Hi, I'm Sostein. I'm here to talk to you today about how to make your very own reticule. So you may already follow me on Instagram where I, you know, do a lot of embroidered stuff. Today I'm going to show you how I use my machine to make this reticule. It's based off of one in the Reich Museum. It's about 1805 or so and it's large enough to actually hold a cell phone and some cards and a, key, a set of keys if you'd like. It's not very large but certainly large enough for the time period. I'm going to go ahead and be I'm going to be embroidering this and then cutting and sewing it together. The paper pattern is available for free on my blog if you want to get that and put whatever design you want. I think honestly this pattern will work with any floral design, either machine or hand embroidery. If you do want to go ahead and use the same pattern, I do sell it on my Etsy as well. Either way, I think it just makes a really nice little handy accessory that is so good for Regency and really anywhere else. else to get started. So you'll see I have some double faced silk duchesse. Um, this is some beautiful thick satin silk and as you can see it's very tough. You can actually kind of see how it has some weight and give to it which is really important when embroidering. In fact if you can't afford double faced silk satin which I completely understand it's seventy dollars a yard. This I would recommend you know just using some cotton twill or if you want you can use some other different taffetas like double faced taffetas and really just even linen is really beautiful with embroidery. So here I have some silk because the original at in the museum was silk so of course I have to have silk. Okay here is some um, some cotton paper tearaway interfacing. This is the interfacing I like to use with thicker fabric like this. And what I'm going to do is I actually just cut some a little bit wider than my hoop. And I have my bottom hoop here. And I'm going to just go ahead and hoop it. And I like to leave about a margin of about two and a half, three inches on the edge here, and I'll show you why. And as you can see, I really do like to make this nice and taut. There's a lot of debate on whether or not you want your hoop all that tight. Me, personally, from experimentation, I like the way my embroidery comes out better on tight lace hoops, but maybe you feel differently. So then what I, the reason I like it is because then I pull it around to the other side, as you can see here. And what I do is I actually pin it so that as the machine embroiders and as the fabric naturally shrinks, the de design doesn't actually really move anywhere. It moves a little bit, but the movement is significantly reduced. So you'll notice that there's still a little bit overlap here. So then I go ahead and bring it back and I'll pin it down there. Okay. And then I do it on the other side as well. And this results in a hoop that is super nice and tight. And this results in my embroidery shifting less during the embroidery process. Which for, you know, this is actually about a three hour design. It's not a huge deal. But some of my embroidery designs actually take any, as long as eight, nine hours and will sometimes sit in my machine for two or three days because I don't have eight or nine hours to babysit it. In which case, you're going to get a lot more shift. So this actually decreases the amount of shift. So now it's ready. Let's go to the machine. So here I am just showing off my machine. As you can see, I've gone ahead and put up all the threads in the appropriate spots and I have pulled up the pattern on my machine. Here, let me zoom in on the pattern so you can see it. As you can see, I have a pattern. It's only about six, it says it's about 88 minutes, which usually means it's about double that. So it's gonna be about three hours, which is what I find it normally takes. And as you can see, it also says 56 on the left there, which means it's gonna be 56 minutes until I have to change my thread colors. So I have my machine going now. I have it embroidering with tire silk thread. It's a Japanese silk thread that's about 50 weight. 
and you can buy it on Superior Threads or you can buy it anywhere really if you can find it. It's very hard to find. And my machine here is a Brother PR1000E. It's a 10 needle machine. It's borderline industrial, but not quite. It has a 14 by 8 inch hoop, which is very, very large, as you can imagine. Um, it doesn't really get much larger than that, because when you do get larger than that, the hoop just becomes unmanageable and the tension becomes very hard to control. So you're not really going to find hoops larger than that. If you do, um, let me know. This machine is borderline industrial, as I said. It runs around $14,000 to $17,000 new. Mine was bought used off of the used market that I watched very closely. And I actually watched for several months before I got it. Um, it belonged to a little lady who ran an embroidery shop and she put about 6 million stitches on it. Since then, I have put about 40 million more stitches. It means I use this machine a lot, and I really do think that's why I was willing to kind of invest in a better machine. If you are just starting out, I certainly do not recommend a 10 needle to start. A 10 needle is really nice because you don't have to switch the colors as frequently. On the other hand, it means that you have 10 different needles where it can break down, and you may not know which one needle is breaking down, why it's breaking down, and you definitely want to have some practice with a one needle. The good news is that you can buy a one needle that is fairly large. I really started out with the VE2200. It's also by Brother. Uh, Baby Lock also makes a very similar model. It has an 8 by 12 inch hoop with the upgrade. Normally has a 7 by 12 inch hoop. And it works beautifully. It's actually what I made my two first frock coats with. And if you're just starting out, that's the one I would go with. And if it turns out you love embroidery as much as I do, or even more, then you can just go ahead and sell it and buy this one along with me. So you can see my machine finishing up here. It's really starting to come together and you can see the flower design. And I wish I got to actually record the portion where you see the bow come on because that's really satisfying. Unfortunately, my camera died and the battery died right then. So that's the part you kind of missed out on. I'm so sorry. But on the other hand, you know, you got to see everything else. What you don't see is here is me actually taking it out of the hoop and then tearing off the interfacing and then ironing it. So we'll take off from there. After I go ahead and cut out the two pieces using my pattern, the front and the back, I go ahead and pin it together. I use a friction pen which goes away with ironing to go ahead and draw out the outline of where I want to sew. I didn't actually get my design perfectly on the center and that's okay because that's why I used a pen to draw where I would actually put it. Now the good news is that if you do not like the way that it's been put on that it doesn't seem that centered that's completely historically accurate if you actually look at historical reticules and garments and whatever 18th century sewing the embroidery was very rarely perfectly on center it was usually just a little bit off and that gives it that lovely 18th century homemade feel so then i draw it on the line and i'm going to go sew it So you can go ahead and see where I've sewn up the line. And I go all the way to the top there and around the corners. Um, I usually just go ahead and trim the excess fabric. This is why I said, you know, don't worry about like um, your design being a little off center because you, I, I usually trim that seam allowance anyway. That's all cut. And then I go ahead and snip into the corners there. There. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut off this corner here, this corner here, and this corner here. I'm going to iron this, turn this the other way inside out, and I'll be and you'll see it then. So, now I've gone ahead and I've actually ironed down the top edge here. As you can see about half an inch. And this is just going to go ahead and I'm going to actually hand finish it from here on out. But as you can see there, it's 
starting to look like a, like a real reticule, but it does need a lining. The original, I don't, have no idea what it was lined with since I have not seen the original in person myself. I know that they were lined either with patterned cottons, and you can get some at... Um, at the Colonial Williamsburg Collection has a lot of beautiful cotton prints that some of which were actually taken from silk lined objects. There's one that was actually from a petticoat. I'm actually going to use this linen here. It's, um, it's from Berlin Trowbridge. It's really soft, it's really thin. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out two pieces of the pattern as well and then sew those together. So confession, I really don't like pinning patterns down and then cutting it out slowly. It's really slow to me. So here I've gone ahead and actually used my ruler to hold down the pattern and I've traced it with a friction pen, which as I said, goes away with heat. And I trace it, I pin it, and then I cut it out. And that's much faster. Now I've gone ahead and sewn the lining up. This is gonna go in here, but before I do that, I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and cut off these, a lot of the seam allowance. It's currently about 5 eighths of an inch. I wanna cut down to about 3 three, three eighths or about a quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna iron this down um, around the edging so that it actually fits inside of the bag without this having to um, fl fl flailing or bout over there. So here you see the bag, the, the bag lining and the exterior. And as you can see, the inside of the lining is still really pretty and the ugly parts on the outside. And that makes sense because what's gonna happen is I'm actually going to go ahead and kind of shimmy this in here and this actually will be going in here like so and as you can see what ha ends up happening is that there is this portion that's sticking out what's going to happen is i will be ironing this down but before i do that i want to put in an eyelet and I'll show you the reason for the eyelet. It's actually for the drawstring of the bag. The, the drawstring is actually on the inside of the bag. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna draw this little dot here and I'm going to hand sew an eyelet here. Um, I don't know if you know how to draw sew an eyelet, but it's really easy. I really recommend um, you know, watching another video on how to do an eyelet and I'll be right back. So here I'm using a larger needle and some silk buttonhole thread to sew an eyelet. I don't know why I sew this eyelet by hand. Honestly, it goes on the inside. It's not even really that functional because I never actually close the drawstring and no one's ever gonna see it. So if you ever wanna just go ahead and use that machine eyelet, I won't tell anyone and completely honestly, 50% of the time, that's what I do anyway. Okay, so I don't know how well you can see this cause it's white on white, but there is a seam about three eighths of an inch away from the edge. It encapsulates the eyelet that I just hand sewed and then you can go ahead and see how it goes all the way around making a little tunnel for the laces to go through and as you can see from this it's there's a there it is so what I do now is I just go ahead and put this in here I usually put the eyelet towards the front of the bag so there we go I'm again this is my guess on where how the eyelet goes this is and this is how I've been doing it for a while but if you find a better method or you think my method is utter crap please say in the comments below I'm actually always curious to learn what the actual historically accurate method was so here I actually do sew the bag down into the lining by hand and I don't suppose that there is a way to do it by machine. I actually use my machine for all invisible seams. I'm not that patient enough to do seams that no one will ever see by hand. So if you guys are patient enough to do that, that's amazing. Kudos and kudos again, that is way better than me. So I went ahead and sewed it by hand. I'm actually using a t silk thread called Tire Silk Thread 50 weight. And that's actually the same thread I use for my machine embroidery. It's really strong. Silk thread is 
like the strongest thread you can get that and polyester and they're about equal in strength but the silk i happen to have hordes of it in my house so that's what i use to just kind of sew it down i use a whip stitch here and once it's all sewn down this bag is almost done it's crazy so that's how I made my reticule. I hope you enjoyed and possibly even learned something. Please subscribe if you want to see more.